welcome to the 2012 season of the Kitsap Destruction Derby Association event number one here at Thunderbird Stadium, May 5, 2012, Cinco de Mayo. And this is the 40th anniversary of the KDDA. Well, we're the West Side TV production crew here for Metal to Metal TV on the Doctor Doc Park, looking much better than Brick Ward, <laughs> who is out on another game chase. Uh, I'm a partner here, Mr. Mike Pinky Nordstrom. And we're going to bring you some great action tonight from the stadium here for KDVA. We've got Chris Mossman on the director, Eric Reichel, Patricia Ann, and Mr. Jack Bacon on the cameras for you. And Pinky, always fun to start out the season. Yeah, I walked the pits, and the car count's a lot better than I thought it was going to be to start the season on. We've had a lot of rain this last week. Uh, looks like there's a lot of race cars, big and small. There's a few finale cars, and the crowd's a lot bigger than I anticipated. So we're looking for a pretty good night here tonight. It's a little muddy. The cars are a little slow. I even brought a finale car out tonight. So uh -oh. we'll, uh, we'll have some pick fun. Pick out, pick out. So we may, uh, may be just like uh, Louisville. Yeah. The Kentucky Derby didn't make any. It may be the night for the mudders. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be slow going, but the track will dry out a little when they start clearing it up. But uh, it'll be fun. It's opening night. Weather's holding out. It's Cinco de Mayo. It looks like we're having burgers and fries tonight for Cinco de Mayo. All right. But we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. All right. Well, we'll be back with you shortly for the beginning of the 40th season of the KEDA. And what we're going to work on here, to, we're going to West Sound is going to present an award this year, and it's going to be the king or queen of the heat for the big cars and the mini cars. And the way it's going to work, the six fastest qualifiers, which is big car A dash and mini car A dash, will receive points in the order of their finish, plus one point for the fastest qualifier. And at the end of the season, they'll get a beautiful, handmade, welded trophy of car parts from the junkyard. Very nice. To signify the king or queen of the heat. Sounds good. Now, I assume, Pinky, they're going to line up in their qualifying order? Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Six fastest, or is it eight? Well, we'll see. We'll see. We got Mark Blossom out there in the number three. Sven Melsa, number 42. KC Strait, number 24 in the travel all. And Mr. Mopar, Patrick Duncan, number 41 in another Imperial. Should have two more coming out at least. Well, we'll see. Some of the uh, big cars, in fact, Michael Mathis, who works with us on West, uh, West Sound, uh, has that camera for years, has a Mercury out there, and it died in the tech line. Yeah, I think the starter took a poop. So. So it looks like we're going to go with three cars. Oh, oh, here's the, uh, the number 10. What? Cody Wells, part of the Harp group. He was pretty fast last year also. Oh, now he's moving up there to the front. Sweet. Was he our fast qualifier? He might have been. One we'll of the have top to two. Check on that, then. Ah, Mr. Jim Harp. Number seven, another fresh Imperial for 2012. Oh boy, harps are always competitive. Here. You got enough of them from me over the winter. <laughs> there they go. So there are going to be six cars here in this A dash. All right, folks, this is the six fastest cars that qualified for the night. These guys got the big motors, well built cars, and we're ready for some action. Green flag, and we're underway. We're off. The 2012 season is underway. And right away, that GMC having a little trouble on that light back end. 
Oh yeah, it's going to be slow going tonight. The more <laughs> horsepower you got in gears, the worse it is when you're in the mud. Oh, here's a nice race right down here, though, for first spot. Oh yeah. Pat and Cody uh, Wells, Cody. number ten. Cody Wells has the edge coming around on the first lap. Casey straight taking over second. Pat having trouble on the outside. Oh, Casey putting a little bumper there on Cody. Ah, he's gonna pit him. He oh, does yeah. it. Yeah, and Casey straight taking the lead, but Finn coming up on the inside. Oh yeah, Casey straight always hard to beat. Veteran, a lot of years racing here. He knows what he's doing. And they hit the sippy hole. Oh boy. Back down to five miles an hour. Look, it is coming up on the inside. It's Pat Duncan. Can he make that tight turn? Ah, no. KC still there. Cody Wells lost the right rear tire. And it's KC straight still in the lead. Oh, yeah. He's got a nice lead going now. It's going to be hard to catch him in that big travel off. Things grabbing corners, and he knows how to drive this track well. Second is Pat Duncan in the 41. Cody Wells is down a lap. Sven Melsep, number 42, is in third. Jim Harp, fourth. Mark Lawson, Cody Wells bringing up the rear, rounding out the field. White flag is out. One lap to go for Casey Strait, number 24. Pat Duncan still in second. Sven Melser from the Duncan Garage in third. And checkered flag for Casey Strait, number 24. Congratulations. That big old suburban desert to start out the season. Yeah, Pat, is he going to get across the line? Come on, buddy. And he does. Very nicely done. Followed by Spin Melseth in third. And did you get the other finishing order? Easy there, Bigfoot. <laughs> I believe it was Patrick Duncan, then Spin Melseth. I got them as two and three. Jim Hart, fourth. Okay, Jim Mark is a fourth. Blossom, number three and fifth. And bringing up the rear was Cody Wells, missing a rear tire. Okay. All right, KC starts out kind of the way he did last season. He had some incredible races in a, a, van, a rig like the Suburban that was sideways half the season and still Thank winning. Thank God he scrapped that thing. <laughs> we all wanted to see something new. It was horrible looking. Okay, Shane, can you grab him? That's a, I can. I have uh, KC straight here. Man, you drove it like you stole it. How'd you do that? It just worked out well, I guess. <laughs> Track's a little bit goopy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's nasty. Yeah. Yeah, but hey, that seems to work. Now, All right. Smithy finally put that Suburban to rest. <laughs> did you finally put that Suburban to rest? I did. It had a bad cap and rotor, so I had to chuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> nice. All righty. Thank, thank you, you, Shane, and thank you, Casey Strait, the winner of the A-Dash for the big cars. All right, here we go for the A dash of the big cars. These are the six fastest big cars in the qualifying. We're on the little cars now, buddy. Oh, mini, that's right. <laughs> the big mini cars. The big of minis. And they're already starting up. 98, 02, Riley Morris. 98 is Sean T. Smith. Yep, you got Mike Theobald out there, the guy that came up from. The Great White North, 63. Mike Lester, number 63. Number 32, John Galbraith. And O2 out there should be, uh, well, that's. O O2. There's the O2. It's Richie Sharp. Yeah, I was going to say that's the Richie Sharp paint job. Now we're still, we are underway with the green flag out there. 124 had a hard time getting going. And that was. Number 98T, Stefan Sellers out in front. And I hope that's the right name. Looks like it, 98T. O2, Sharp passing him. Richie Sharp, 
Having a little trouble on turn two. It's deep over there. Ah, uh, here's a good little run to this. Oh, he cuts him off into the tire. Into the east corner, and Sharp comes out of that one, the winner. Yes, sir. Little cars are a little better on the mud. They're lighter, front-wheel drive, most of them. They take the corners pretty well. And it looks like Smith in the 98 is dead down here in the corner below us. Richie Sharp just about pulling a reverse wheelie there with the back coming off the ground on that sippy <laughs> hole in turn three. <laughs> Still in the lead. 63 coming up on him. Now I don't know if 63 is on the same lap. That's Mike Lester. I believe oh. he is. Yeah, I believe he is. Oh, well, and he's in the lead then. Sharp had a little bit of a problem there making that corner. Yeah, he's playing catch up now to Mike Lester, who's a veteran out here. He knows what he's doing. He's right up on him. And there he goes, he hit dry land. Look at him go. Like somebody shot him out of a rubber band. Oh, they're coming down to the finish line. And... White flag out for... Whoa, oh. he was a lap behind, and the winner is going to be Richie Sharp. All right, congratulations to Richie Sharp and the O2 car taking it down in the neon. And 32 coming up second on that one, and that would be John Gelbreth. Very nice. 124 crosses the finish line. Should be Mike Theobald. And 98 and 401 aren't going to make it across the line. Buckethead taking down the first <laughs> win in the Mini Car A Dash for 2012. Happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody out there, May 5th. Make sure you have a taco or a burrito or an enchilada tonight, some beans and rice. Your wife will thank you in the morning. Okay, Shane. Go ahead. All right, I have uh, Richie Sharp here. Richie, driving a front wheel drive. That's a little change in pace there. Free. Good deal. Well, that thing is pretty fast. You get, you get last hey, Shane, walk away, keep away from the car when you're interviewing it. What's that? One night. Just one night. Well, he said he's going to have this car just for one night. Shane, do a little test for us and walk away and talk to you from the car. That microphone's skipping pretty good. Can you get, hear me now? Get him over by the tire and see how it sounds. There was only two cars anyway. Yep. Uh, well, the O2 ended up with the winner. All right. Let's try that. How about now? That's a lot better. There. That thing's touchy on the bottom, so you yeah. have to be careful. All right, thanks, here.
it off the lead, number seven. Oh, seven, Jim Harp the third is gonna be your leader. Four laps to go, says the flagman. And the rookie, Dan Reeder. Steve Harris, the engine sounds like a boat motor underwater. Not liking all the mud. Rex Noble in the 52. Boy, I am not looking forward to the finale tonight. You make one false move and you're stuck. That's it. Two laps to go. And we'll see. Looks like the white flag is going to come out for Jim Harp the third. Along with the rookie, Dan Reeder. Yeah, that actually the slower cars tonight and the less geared cars are going to be your ones that are going to win the races. We had the 36, give it a little help there in the 52 to turn them around. That would be Steve Harris in the 36. Yeah, and they are stuck together. They have the Harris the checkered flag for Jim Huff, the third in the 07. Yep. And Dan Reeder, the rookie. Not far behind in second. Hit number two. The other cars have not finished. And I don't know if uh, Steve and Rex Noble are going to be able to get separated out there. Nope. It's not looking good. You get hung up with somebody tonight, you're pretty much stuck there until they end the race and get you unstuck. It looks like it. We are our intrepid uh, field reporter, Jane Hamry. Remember to stay uh, away head, from the car when you're interviewing, or we'll have to. Heading out to Jim Harp the third there in the 07, the winner of the big car B Dash, the six, seven through 12 fastest cars in qualifying. Yeah, Jimmy Harp bringing out a fresh Mopar tonight, a shocker. That's going to be his finale car also tonight, he said. He didn't want to go out and race it, but he made the B-dash, so he kind of had to. So he's probably happy, and he won it. Go ahead, Shane. All right, we have Jim Harp here. Um, you drove pretty dang good, got a couple of people stuck, and got out of your way. I just wanted to hit. <laughs> it's pretty hard to hit hard when it's so sloppy, huh? Uh, yeah. You got 513 gears in your car, you can't get nowhere. <laughs> Except for in drive. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. All right, Shane, thanks for the thanks. interview. Yeah, Jim Harp the third, the winner there of the big car B Dash. All, All right. right, now we got these mini cars coming out. This is the regular number two, so that's yep. Riley Morris. 67 is out there. That would be Ryan Cooper. 198, Matt Knowlton. 97 out there is Rick Smith. 156. 156. Chad Steiger. Rounding out the back, number 321 is Sean, Sean Briley. And we're underway. Green flag out. And coming out of that first turn up there on the west end. Look at on the inside. Nice job there by the 198. Yeah, getting it done at the Kitsap Chainsaw 500. Matt, nope. Oh, man, he's just ripping through that mud. And maybe they're getting past that first layer and going to actually hit some ground down there to grab onto. Second place is a 97 of Rick Smith. Yeah, see, he hit the sippy hole and slowed weight up, but then he gets that dry ground on the back stretch coming into turn three. 198, your leader. Matt Knowlton. Uh-oh, Rick Smith running into the tire down here on this east west end. Oh, and he's going to get passed. Almost. He does get passed by our pretty car winner. Oh, yeah. A lot of these cars are still going to be straight after night, just really dirty. And I'll tell you that, goodwill car out there, uh, Rick Smith's is looking pretty good. It's pretty racy. Yeah, these are the this is the fastest I've seen any cars go tonight. These minis are tearing it up, so 
I think the track might be getting the first layer down a little bit. And still in the lead. It looks like it's at 198 to Matt Knowlton. The corners are just still really bad, especially turns two and three on the back stretch. Everywhere else seems to be looking pretty good so far. Uh-oh, Knowlton got hooked up, went a little too wide up there in the east end. So we have a new leader, well, or do we? I will have to see. He might have got out of trouble. White that, lap, 190, still in the lead. Yeah, white flag out, one lap to go for Knowlton. He's hanging on. Yeah, and this time he's going to cut that corner a little bit tighter, not get out there. Comes around this west side real nice. Uh oh, oh, he just broke his rear strut. Look at the wheel is pointing straight out. Uh, but he's going to take that checkered flag. Oh, 321's rear wheel is just gonzoed. 321 is another Skip Jackson. Uh, he's right here. 321R, Sean, Sean Briley. Briley. Yeah, somebody got a hold of that little rear axle to strut there. All right, so coming out of that one, and that was a racy event there. Yeah, a little action finally. And our winner is Knowlton. Very nice. Yep, right. Knowlton. We've got some new names so far tonight out in the winner's circle. Yeah, Matt Knowlton. Taking it down, good job. Okay, Shane is out there to talk to Matt. We have uh, Matt Knowlton here. Um, I heard a rumor that you weren't even gonna race this year. What's going on? Wasn't going to, but I collected about seven cars now, so we're in it for the, to go for it or go broke. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you did good. You started off by winning this year. That's pretty good. Thanks, sir. All right, there you have it. Okay, thank you, Shane. Well, that's good to hear that uh, he got himself going with seven rigs. Now we're back and ready for some mini car action. And it's one of the special events tonight. It's the boat race, Mickey. Yeah, a little mini cars, mini trucks, pulling aluminum boats around. We were talking <laughs> about this earlier. You want to take the guy's boat off, unhook it somehow, smash it, whatever, but it's got to break free of the car or truck, and the last guy with one on is your winner. And a 59 got stuck on the way out. Tony that would Timley. Be Tony. And Tony was our rollover winner last year, and this year apparently he's stuck in the mud here. Yeah, he's got an anchor behind him dragging. You can see it's upside down, it just drug him right in. Yes, see, so far out there in the starting line, we've got number 63, which is Mike Lester. 321 is behind him, and that would be the rookie, Sean Briley. And is that 96? Justin Hart, I think that's a 96 in that green, lime green truck. Did they not do the rollover, or did I miss it? Didn't you see the entire thing, Mickey? Jeez, that no, was No, they quick. missed it. They did not apparently have the roller over competitors. And Timmy Timlick, who was last year's winner, is running in this race. Which is too bad, because the crowd always loves the rollovers. Yeah, that's a crowd favorite over here, but what do you do? Not too good a track to be trying to do that tonight either. So. Well, that's true, yeah. You're not going to get hardly any speed at. Maybe they should have just had the guys run out there, jump off the track and roll around in the mud. That would have been all right. <laughs> Crowd would have liked it. Yeah, I don't suppose they're allowed to use uh, snow tires or chains. <laughs> no. I wonder if Tim looks getting stuck. The chain, the anchor, the chain, anchor chain he's using is bigger than his car. <laughs> I'll get it out yet. Yeah, you wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, we got four cars out there. And uh, that appears to be what we've got. So, Doc, did, they, uh, did we uh, bring any beverages in here with us tonight? Any sodas or anything? Uh, there may be something back in the back room. Very nice. All right, we're coming around to the start line here. Brandon Nixon, our flag man, swings that green flag, and we are underway. It's going to be a figure eight. And jumping out into that lead is number 63, Mike Lester. Number 
Now, generally, the idea is to knock the boats off the back of the other cars, but we may have a little bit of a problem tonight with this mud. Yeah, Mike Lester going through the middle. I almost cut that boat. That was <laughs> just in <Yeah>. heart. <laughs> almost yeah. had him. Poor Tony Timlick's still stuck over there. He didn't even get moving much. Yeah. And Lester gets around him. Yeah, we've got some cars down here in this west end that are stuck in the mud. Right now we've got two cars going. And it's Lester with a big lead. Mike Lester in that 63 is able to keep it running. Got a stack fire coming out of the 96 truck of Justin Hart. Tony Timlick's running. He's just not moving. Yeah, he's stuck darn near where he started. They just bad luck on that thing. That chain's too heavy, I told you. Basically carrying an anchor around with him. Yeah, you know, it looks like he's got rear wheel drive in that thing. Yeah. Normally, except for the trucks, you'd have front wheel drive in most of these mini cars, wouldn't you? Yeah, a lot of them. It's just, it's tough for the fans tonight. You know, these guys are not going to get to see a lot of hardcore action like normal when the track is right out because it's just a soup hole, but they'll do the best they can to put on the show. And Hart, it looks like he's stopped again. He got her going. Uh-oh. Everybody's clocked up. It looks like Los Angeles is rough. Rush hour. Yeah, Lester trying to take the boat out. All he did was get himself stuck <laughs> on Hart's truck and boat. So he says, enough of that. <laughs> and he's passing him with performance and agility, but not any speed. <laughs> now, I thought last year the point was to knock the other guy's boats off. Yeah, well, I this think they're year, just trying to get some laps done here. That's what that's it looks like. Tough All enough. Right. And it's going to be the checkered flag up there for Mike Lester. Sorry about that, folks, but uh, the track is not allowing them to get any crazier. And Mike is going to continue moving right out, so we won't have any interview there of our winner. And three of them stuck in the mud.
Oh, yeah. Boy, that big block Mopar is. They don't like the heat. When they get hot and lose water, they're done. And it looks like it's steaming good. Uh-oh, he's working Casey, though. And Casey's working him now. He's got a little rivalry going on there, I believe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe nobody will finish this race. <laughs> I'll get it out. Well, we had a white flag out. We'll have to see, though, who ends up getting that checkered. I think Casey's still in the lead. He's just got to get this last lap down. And he got her turned me. around. He's back running. And I don't think Harps, well, there again, that's that area where he just can't get that thing moving. Rodriguez and Duncan are in the mud. Yeah, yeah, there's Jim making the corner. And there's the chicken flag for KC Straight. Uh, 24 out there wins another one. Boy, I think you need to run Suburbans or Internationals. Yes, <laughs> good weight transfer, obviously. <laughs> Wonder what, do you know what kind of an engine he's got in that thing? Oh, I'm sure it's a small block Chevy. 350 or something yeah, like that? I'd bet money on it. It's got yeah, one of those right. 350 Chevys in it. Well, there we go. That's the first big car figure eight of the evening. And both Brandon Nixon, the flag man, and our intrepid field reporter. Shade Hammer making his way out there to the rig. And Casey, are you gonna let anybody win tonight? Not if I can help it. <laughs> yeah, out of boy. Hey, the the guys up in the booth want to know what kind of motor you're running. 340. Dodge. Oh, he's got a Mopar in it. My bad. All right. All right. There you have it. Congratulations, Casey. Thank you. All right. All right, uh, Mopar slash Jimmy out there. Look at him making a liar out of me the first night. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to Casey Strait. He's got the second win of the night, number 24, racking up those season totals here in event number one. Well, we'll have the first mini car figure eight coming up for you shortly. All right. It's going to be our first mini car figure eight of the night. First rig out there is a number 78 truck of Mike Martin. 140 out there is Dan Markwick. 92 is Matthew Schroeder. 707 flying out there tonight is rookie Chris Stockton. Yeah, and they're starting to move. We'll get the rest of them as they come around. That orange truck on the inside is 25. That's Craig Oning. Yeah, we're underway. Oning in the lead. It has four cars down here. And then West End tied up and owning out there. Yeah, this is just a horrible track. It's, we thought it was going to get a little better, and it's getting worse. They're just piling up on every corner. Once you're stuck on somebody, that's all she wrote. And owning manages to get around that east corner. Same He's truck from last year. Yeah. Made it through the sippy hole. Got a little tight racer for second spot, though, between 70 and 140. 70 is Mike Martin, the 140 is Don Parkwick. Yeah, they don't want to go fast into the corners, but but they should be because that's where they're getting stuck. They got the three car pile up down in front of us. Owning out in front by a quarter of a track length. Mike Tonka Martin on his heels, catching up slowly. <laughs> Number 92, Matthew Schrodel. He's his oh. rear axle's bent bad. And there you go, a shot in the middle, finally in a figure eight. Very nice. Finally a little action. 
that, yeah, that rear wheel there is just terrible shape for him. Yeah, somebody hit him really good in that passenger quarter panel. Pretty much did the car in. Looks like Mark Wick and number 25, Craig Owning, the only two current, nope, we got three. The 70 is also running out there. That would be Mike Martin. Uh oh! Come on! Come on! Oh! oh. Super close! That was a swing and a super close. <laughs> Take that ball! Still out there in the lead is Craig Owning in the 25. 140 is uh, Mark Wick, and I believe he's in second place. Yep, got that new Celica out there tonight. And there you see the whole field, the whole track, folks, and it is not good. It doesn't look too bad on camera, but it's really bad. It's actually getting worse. Mike Tonka Martin just bottomed out down here in the front of us. Oh, man. I don't know if Oning's going to make it. Oh, man. He almost didn't make it oh, through that he time. got through it. This is where a four-wheel drive would come in handy in the races. Or an all-wheel drive. Yeah, it looks like Mike Mark Tuck is done. Yeah, they're overheating, too, because you have to over-rev them just to move. So it's really hard on the motor. Two cars out there running. Craig Oning, who pretty much led from the start, and uh, 140 of Don Markwick. Eight cars entered. <laughs> oh, Two yeah. may make it out. Yes. I don't know. Oh, man, Markwick went down that same hole Rick Duncan was stuck in. Uh-oh. And Oning just plugged the final hole. That's the same spot the last lap he couldn't make it out of. And it looks like he's stuck good. So Mark Wick's got to make some room for himself to get through. Oh, and he does. He frees up Corey Tucker, the walrus. All right. And he's going to even make it through there. I don't believe it. There's and he's the in first place. Flag. Yeah. Owning just a mad as a hornet. He was in the lead, easily had the victory. Kept taking that corner that's too slow, just like we said. That's the exact same spot. He almost got stuck in the lap before. Yeah. We got one more lap for the 140 of Don Markwick. I'm pretty sure a guy out there running could have beat the cars in a race here tonight. <laughs> Maybe we should see if Shane wants to do that. Yes. All right, here we go. Got that little hole that he made for himself. Oh, yeah. Nice job by Mark Wack. Taking down the victory in this horrible figure eight. Getting it done, thanks to Owning getting stuck. He made his way through and got the walrus undone. And you gotta give him credit because he had to make his own way there. He had to push a couple of cars out of the way to get there. Yeah, he got creative. That's Your winner, Don Marwick. Shane Hamry going out to see him. All right, good job there, Don. And there's Shane out there with Don. All right, we have Don here. Don, I guess uh, if you don't have a way through, just make your own road, huh? Get her done. There you go. <laughs> so, way through. That's how you do it. So you were behind second place the whole time, and. Craig just happened to get stuck in the corner and... Last one running. There you go. So, uh, congratulations on your win. Thank you, sir. Alrighty, thank you, Shane, and thank you, Don Markwick, for that big W out there at... Get her done, get her done, Pinky. I like that. Very nice, get her done. <laughs> get her done in the middle. Alrighty, well, coming up here next should be our big car boat race, and we'll come up with that one for you folks in TV land shortly. Yeah, 
Scott here. We are for the big car boat race, and the first one out there is Mr. Mopar, Pat Duncan, in a 41. Behind him is the 191. And that would be Dan Harthorn. And already stuck in that east end is 52. It's Rex Noble behind him, 10 of Cody Wells. So we've got four big cars pulling boats at the moment. And looks like uh, Pat may even have the catamaran out there. Some outriggers on it. Now I don't know if uh, 52 Rex Noble is going to be getting able to get out of there. His back end is down deep in that hole on the east end of the track. Yeah, there's a great shot of it. Uh-oh, we got Mr. Jim Harp. He's almost pulling a ferry boat there. Look at the size of that thing coming in on the seven car. I think the guys out there are trying to find a little bit of solid ground to line up on. <laughs> well, 52 may already be stuck. Welcome to Mudfest 2012 <laughs> at Kitsap's Thunderbird Stadium. <laughs> 52 is Rex Noble coming up, uh, and it looks like Harp and... Uh, Cody Wells are coming out there. We got Pat and Dan, Pat Duncan in the 41, Dan Harthorn in the 191. What a good night to have a four-wheel drive, huh? Yeah. Should have built four-wheel drive derby cars for the opening night. And if the 52 can't move, that's a tough position for anybody else out there. Oh, man, he's going <laughs> to get it right in the rump. <laughs> are they going to be able to get through is the question. Oh. Uh oh, here we go. We gotta have the forklift come out. Just let him push the cars around the race. That way they'll always stay unstuck. So far, I think that's about the only rig that hasn't been stuck. Zoom boom. <laughs> Bigger tires, better traction. Uh, big, big tires there. Yeah, they're getting into the back there try to lift him out of that hole. Zoom boom coming out. <laughs> Time to get the Nova a little bump start. Uh, yeah, now if he can't move from there, he's completely blocking that corner. He's still stuck. Well, part of his problem, if he's revving it up, this tire on this side, the rear tire's not moving. That means he didn't weld up his rear end, and that's definitely going to kill him. And uh, boom, they're trying to get a little different position there. Oh, nice talk. All right, and it does look like he's gonna get into the lineup. So we've got six cars out there in this big car boat race, and I assume it will be like the first, it's gonna be a figure eight. Smash him and bash him. Look at Harp size of his boat. Out. And they're off at breakneck speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Getting ready to look for a green flag here in just a second. Yeah, yeah, they're cranking him up. They're off. Jim Harp out in the early lead. 
gas jacket and second. You know, I would have paid good money to have some of those aluminum boats. Those things are two or three hundred. Look at the boat up on its side. All right, two. Pat, going through the wake of Jim Harp. He's trying to destroy it. He's trying to drive right through the chain and unhook him. Jim Harp's going to have none of it. And I think they're both going to get hung up in that mud. And coming around the outside, there is a 191, a Dan wow. Hartdor. The wheel man. Getting it done. He's wheeling that one. Look at that. Woo. And Rex Noble stuck down here in this west end. I don't think he's going anywhere soon. 191, Dan Harthorn and his brand new Imperial. A lot of time spent on that one. A couple, two, three hundred hours into that car. Beautiful car. And it looks like Pat Duncan's going to take second place. From Harp, uh-oh. Man, coming around that corner up there. They're all having trouble there. That must be a real mud hole. Pat's stuck now, his rear end deep into it. Harp's barely getting around. Oh, Dan looking for that boat of Jim Harp's. Look at this. Oh, he missed it. Oh, I don't know though. That's a, such a pretty car. Yeah, Jim Harp overheating again. And he's stopped. If this bet he's got her moving. I don't know if don't think Pat's gonna be able to get out of there in the 41. He's trying hard. There goes his partner, 191 Hartorn past him from the all from the Duncan garage. Oh no! Hartorn! Overheating. That's Just right. like Harp in the same spot. It's like the Bermuda Triangle. And here comes Jim. Oh no, he's gonna get his boat. Right over it! Oh, ah, high centered. Oh, hung himself up on the rocks there. Those poor motors are going to get so hot tonight, over revving to compensate for the mud. No wonder anyone's even going to finish a race tonight. And nobody's going anywhere at the moment. Dan Harthorn has the most laps completed, so he would be your winner, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would think if they are going to award it. I don't think Harp can do anything. Oh, no. He's like a boat on the lake that ran over a log. He's high centered. And <laughs> look at that. Pat's all the way deep. There's the checkered flag. Um, I assume they're going to give it to Dan Harthorn. It, yes, it is. <laughs> and he did deserve that one. He was doing pretty good out there. Yeah, he did good. Over. He, he had Shane is heading out to find him. <laughs> Dan and Jim Harp shaking hands there. Shane Littlefoot Hamry. Yeah. <laughs> There he is, Dan the Wheel Man. All right, we got Dan Hawthorne here. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> All right, Dan. What happened out there? It quit running. <laughs> I think I cooked the motor. Already? First uh, there night? There oil everywhere, and it just stopped running. Well, you got the most laps in, and you kicked some butt, so. To my fans out there, the four of them that exist, <laughs> I'm back, people. Very nice. Congratulations, Dan. All right, thanks, Shane. One more time, 191. Yeah. Congratulations to Dan Harthard. Wow. And Dan's worked with us for a few years up here on the mics and down in the ground, and down in the field. So that's good to see. Too bad to hear, though, about the engine. Yeah, that could be a costly blow up if that's what it is. Yeah, if it's something like that with oil all over the place, that's too bad, because that's still a good looking car. Yeah. And we're just about ready to begin the first mini car, figure eight of the E9. Got six cars lined up. The 32 out there is John Galbraith. 690 out there, deep in our numbers here. The 690 is John Bruce. 156, 268. 
One five six is Shad Steiger. The two sixty eight is Ryan Garrison. And one fifty three coming out. That would be Vincent Lee Morris. Yeah, we'll get the other ones as they move up. 63 is one of the ones I didn't mention. Of course, Mike Lester. The 268 is Ryan Garrison. And now they're all moving. Oh, look at Lester. Green flag and Lester takes the lead. Got a little angry there on the first corner, didn't he? I guess so. And here we go on the first turn where they should know not to go. All right, and, stock. Yep, this is a heat race. I called it a figure eight, but it is a heat race. Uh, it's a mud bog. Yep, and Lester out in the front and two cars right below us, the 21 and the 32. See now, Lester had the right idea. He came into that corner as fast as he could, went right through it. Same with 156 is doing. Chad Steiger. Chad Steiger, yep. They, they got it down to coming through that turn hard. The 153 is in third place out there. Vincent Lee Morris even getting it done right. Oh man, and now Lester hung up behind that truck. A truck of Ryan Garrison yeah, might get Stag. through it, but it allowed his competitors to catch right up on him. Deidre Briley in the 21 is one of the cars stuck, and the other one's at 32, John Galbraith. And now another car down here in this rear end of 153 that is not going anywhere. Vincent Lee. Morris. Oh, is Steiger going to plug it up completely? Are we going to no. see a repeat of the last mini race? Oh, no. It takes longer to get the cars off the track than the races take to <laughs> take place. And that other car out there, the number nine of David Lake, and now it's blocked. Uh-oh, look out, Mike Lester. What's he going to do? How is he going to get through? Whoa! Oh, sneaking through on the inside. Look at him go. The needle hole right there, and he threads that needle. He and Chad Steiger, the only ones currently going. Repeat of the last race. And it looks like Chad may be up in the mud on the east end of the track. Oh! oh a little hit there. A little love tap on the way through. Uh, Mike's still running. That's a good looking car. From last year. It's always amazing how these cars survive, period, but a little old for a couple of year run. Going through the honey hole again. Very minimal car. Yeah, time. good job. White flag comes out for Mike Lester. It done, no competition this time. We made it happen. Yeah, I, you can, from our position, you can't even hardly see that space there between the tire and the stuck cars, but just enough for that little mini car to get through. Oh, and Mike barely makes it through on the last one. He didn't go through quick. There checkered it is, flag. Mike Luster with the checkered flag on the first mini car heat race today. Uh, number 63 car coming out, winning the heat race. Second win tonight for Mike. And we'll see if Mike will talk to Shane this time. Mike, you ran away from us last time, so I'm here to interview you now. Congratulations. I didn't even know you guys did this still. Good job. <laughs> So you had to squeeze through the tight hole, huh? Oh man, that was the greatest time. Yeah, well, congratulations on this win. Oh yeah. All right. All right, Shane, thank you. All righty, and the winner for the mini car heat race, number 63, Mike Lester, second win of the night for Mike. And the only car left running.
This is going to be our first big car heat race after the dashes, of course. 42 out there is Pat Duncan, or Sven Melson. Three is Bloss Mark Blossom, Casey Strait in the 24. 19 is your rookie, Dan Reeder. And green flag underway. Michael Mathis out back. Yeah, Michael in the 1 2 2. Stuck Going. down here on the end, unfortunately. Went right where he's not supposed to. Just got his car out of tech, too. Ah, uh, Blossom trying to get through there. Man, at 19 is going everywhere. 14 is Robert Kirkland. 19, the rookie Dan Reeder. And there's Smith. Mark Blossom comfortably out in front. Keeping the Steve pedal to the pedal in the Imperial. Uh-oh, he just got stuck. And that was in one of those zoom boom holes. And that's going to put the rookie out in front. Oh, and Reeder just oh, parked it. Oh, yeah. up into the wall. So did Robert Kirkland. Is he going to be able to get through? Nope. I don't know. I don't think so. And oh. Casey. Ah, oh, Casey's just going to move the tire. Or he was. Now, oh, the rookie reader's getting free. He's going to go. And Casey trying to break loose. Reader going to be out in front. Oh, and Ben's getting free, too. Look at that. Kirkland moving. Oh, that's Robert Kirkland. That's right. That's the new car. And Casey straight gets through between Michael and the tire. Oh, man. See that nose plow on that thing? Crazy. Right down into the dirt. Great big, huge, deep rut right in front of us. I mean, it could almost swallow up a whole car, and it has many tonight. You know, Mark Blossom found that out. Oh, yeah. Casey, though, he's trying to catch Reader. He's going crazy. Oh, Reader just barely getting through the sippy hole. Here comes Casey Strait, about half a track behind. Motoring through the hole. Makes it through. Reader going slow up in that east end, gets um, it picked up. Casey's, Casey's gonna, getting close to him, though. Yeah, he's going to catch him. Reader's got a flat tire up front. Yeah, that's going to hurt him bad. Oh, can he make it? Makes it around. Straight gets through, white flag lap. Oh man, Casey's gonna steal this at the end, I think. Uh, Casey giving him a little help. That's good to see. Then he'll dump him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I tell you? And Casey straight picks up another one. <laughs> Getting it done tonight in the travel hall. I love it. Yeah, once again, the final car running, the only car running, the winner. JC Strait. <laughs> and unfortunately for West Sound's very own Michael Mathis in the 122. He was a three quarter lap wonder. Uh, didn't make it through that first lap. And Shane's got a long ways to go out there to get Casey this time. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to hear him or not on this one. Well, him and his feet are uh, working on getting over there. Yeah, Casey's doing a good job, though, coming over to us. All right, guys, once again, we have uh, Casey. So, uh, Casey, you're just tearing it up out there, man. I tell ya, that was a crappy hole. <laughs> yeah, but you managed to push that tire out of the way and make your own path. Got through it, so that was good. And I want to say hi to Chad, Tammy, Justin, and Cody up in Canada. They're watching us. So Sweet. <laughs> great. All right, congratulations, Casey. All righty, thank you, Shane. And congratulations again to Casey Strait coming in for his third win tonight. Thank you.
Here we go for our next event here at event number one. Second car, mini figure eight race coming oh up boy. here. We've got Riley Morris out front, uh, 67. Ryan Cooper, 59. Tony Timlett, 321 is Sean Briley. 140 is Mr. Dan Markwick. 198. Matt Knowlton. And I'm not sure the number who's on that pickup truck, Doc. Which one is that? Can't see the sign nope, in the back. I can't oh, it's Corey Tucker. And the 97, once again, coming out of the gate, stuck up in the mud. We're going to rack them and stack them on this first turn. I'll bet you there's three dead on the very first <laughs> turn up here in the corner. And the 97 is Rick Smith up there. All right, happy to have you with us. I'm the Dr. Doc Parr. Mike Pinky Nordstrom is on that other microphone, and this is the beginning of the 2012 season for the Kitsap Destruction Derby Association here at Thunderbird Stadium. Great crowd tonight. Good music being played by Dennis Buckholtz, our PA guy out there. Yeah, he's playing some great jams tonight. And unfortunately, the track not helping out. Huge crowd. I mean, we have a crowd worthy of like the Cancer Derby Night or Whaling Days. I mean, it's there's a lot of people. A lot of people come out here tonight to see this. And that would be the middle of July, where you might actually get some dry weather. Once again, we'll have the big Pan Am football game, the Canadians and Americans on Whaling Days later in the year. We'll have the Cancer Derby. Cancer Derby. And the Pink versus purple. Internet live shoot. Uh, we'll wrap things up at the end of September this year. It seemed like last year was at early end of the season, September 10, I think. Yeah, it went really quick last year. But the Derby season overall in other places, too, has been going longer and longer, clear into October. So plenty of racing and plenty of smashing to do. Well, we've got uh, Yakima, I think, has a race at the uh, beginning of October. And of course, uh, the guys over at Pasco, the Smash for Cash, starting in April. Yes, Derek Shoemaker's helping put that on over in Yakima. They do a great job. We had Pasco. You got so many in the state. You got Monroe. We had Puyallup two weeks ago, Slam Fest. Moses Lake will be in August. A lot of shows. Okay, looks like they got the 97 out of the mud. And Brandon Nixon is giving them the green flag from a stand and start. I think that's better because the back stretch is where they can get going to start and make yep. this hole. That's a good idea. And for you folks watching out there, they moved the tires way in to avoid this deep hole that's out here in turn four. So I think it'll make the race an action a little bit better for you. And it looks like gonna come out if they get through that east end. That's the other bad corner. It's these two. It's gonna be the one nine eight. Matt Nolton. Yeah, these turns one and four are horrible tonight. They got these deep, huge holes, ruts full of thick mud. Once you fall in it, you're pretty much not coming out. Now with eight cars out there, you should have an opportunity to get some tagging in the middle on these figure eights. Yeah, we just had a near miss right now in the middle. They're trying to mix it up for us. Oh, here we go, a little action in the middle. Oh, we have contact. <laughs> Corey Tucker trying to make it happen. Nope, getting his way around. And he's gonna get slowed up. Oh, and the two of Riley Morris. Yeah, he gets it out of there, keeps it moving. And I believe, uh, well, we'll have to see now. Nolton was in the lead, but it might be the 97 now of Rick Smith. Okay, we got the red flag out. That means stop racing because of a big burst of flame coming out of the 67. Cooper. And yeah, they're gonna 
Puts a flame retardant down there. Coop gets out quickly. Did you say retardant? <laughs> <laughs> flame retardant. I often wonder how they came up with that. <laughs> Maybe because it's holding it back? Uh, could be. Slowing it down, possibly. And now when they wave this green flag, who's going to get going? I guess everybody pretty much. Good job. Riley Morris cutting the wagon out of the hole, finally rocking it back and forth. Number two. Corey Tucker sitting in the middle. Bait. Oh. No can do. What do they got? A red light. Oh, nice shot there. The 97 meets Rick Smith, meets Riley Morris in the middle of the track. Very nice. Yeah, look at that OA, Tucker. He's looking for somebody, I think. Yeah, they went far left. I don't know why out of the path of travel, maybe for traction. The cars are split up pretty good right now. We might see a little action here in the middle if we can oh. cross it. That 198 of Knowlton hitting the middle tire. He's still going, and I believe he's the leader. Oh, he's a 97 Nolten. there. Rick Smith is hung up under the truck. Yeah, 140. Nolton getting hung up on a car on the turn four trying to come in. Oh, 140 was going for Nolton. That would be uh, Don Markwick. 321. Oh, near miss in the middle. Oh, uh, Sean Bradley. 321 escaping with his life. White flag is out. And the 198 of uh, Matt Knowlton is struggling. Uh oh, look out, look out. Oh. Can't catch him, I don't think. That Ron was Markwick. John Markwick going for him. Trying to hit him. And there it is, a win for Matt Knowlton. And that's number two tonight for Matt in that 198. Very nice. That was a pretty competitive uh, That's the best run. race we've seen so far, the most action. It certainly helped moving that tire in uh, down on this end. Well, folks, we're pretty much at the midway point of the night, if you can believe that. We still <laughs> have two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine more heat races before we can get to the main events, which is the small car finale first, followed by the big car to end the night, so. Yeah, we'll see if we get all the way through them here. It's uh, going on eight o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, we started at six, that's two hours to here. It could be another two to get done, so. And where's Shane? There's Shane right down there by our winner. Shane, you hold that microphone well. A little bit of steam coming up out of there on Nolan's car, but another big win. Matt, crazy man. Yes. You're driving like you stole it. Just driving how I fuck, how I built the car. Sorry, that <laughs> language. Oops. <laughs> this is a family event. Getting well, a little hot. I think I'm gonna <laughs> shut her down for the night and be done. Yeah, it's getting too nasty to race out here. It's, it's not worth it. All right. Well, hey, you're doing really well for uh, not even gonna be able to make it out here before, you know? I know. All you're right. Doing good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Alrighty, thank you, Shane, and congratulations to Matt Knowlton. And here we go for our next event. It's going to be a big car race, and we've got some of the regulars out there in that 28 car, Royce Rodriguez. The 10 car, we've seen him out there tonight. Cody Wells, and of course, a perennial winner, the number 24 of KC Straight. Jim Harp out there. Three is Mike Blossom. Five, two coming out uh, next is Rex Noble. And already stuck in the mud out there. Deep in the mud, in fact is I believe that's Jeremy Pratt in the 152. Yeah, we'll see. They're gonna bring that boom truck out to get him out of that hole up there in that east end. So this should be our second figure eight for the big cars tonight. Oh, look at that. He's got the trunk down there in the mud. 
a little bit of a helping hand. We got to give our big award tonight to the Zoom Boom Driver. Okay, we got everybody lined up on the far side from the flagger. And there's the green flag. They're starting them out over there in that back stretch because it's got some solid ground. And a nice run down into this first corner. And Royce Rodriguez stays alive. And apparently it's a heat race and not a figure eight as our schedule says. But that's okay, Royce Rodriguez in the lead. And that 152 of Jeremy Pratt that was stuck needed help to get going in second. Mike Blossom in third. But there goes Jeremy Blossom going around him. And Royce stuck up in the, the east end turner. Turn and Mike Blossom coming through. Jim Harp giving a little help. But I don't know if he's going to get him out of that mud or not. Rodriguez and Pratt side by side. Jimmy's going in reverse trying to figure out how to get out. Oh, they got him moving. But it's Mike Blossom in that number three car still in the lead. By KC Street and the family hauler is coming up quick. Well, gonna have a little action here in the corner. Actually, Jim doing a nice job of letting the leader by. About half a track difference there between KC and Mike Blossom. 152 wheeling it pretty good. That would be Jeremy Pratt. And Royce Rodriguez started out in the lead, got hung up and lost a couple. Lap. Blossom is still in the lead. KC straight though, closing in on him. Oh, and KC goes by Blossom. Kind of. Now Blossom's going. Are we looking for another KC straight win? Well, man? we. It's Mike Blossom right now. KC looks like he's dead. Oh yeah. Out there. Yep. Something happened to the old International. The Mopar finally overheated. And Blossom has got moving again. He's moving pretty good, actually. Jeremy Pratt, 152, moving around pretty good. We'll have to see. There's the white flag out there for Mike Blossom. Mark Blossom. Got to get a win tonight. Yep, Mark. Excuse me. And I'm not sure, I think Jim Harp is going to be the second place. And here we go. Mark Blossom gets that chicken flag here in this big car heat race. And he's got some steam coming in. Oh, little tag bumpy to go. <laughs> Mark lost. Getting and done. Pratt and uh, Jim Harp. Jeremy, it looks like trying to give Jim a push out of that hole down below us here. Uh, come on. Come on. Couple of Imperials stuck together. That's yeah. not a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, that might take the tow truck to get him out. Yeah, hey, folks, we'll be back in 30 minutes before the next race. <laughs> Mark Blossom, your winner, though, for this one. And it turned out to be a heat race. All right. Good enough. So I don't know if we're, that was our, I believe that was our second big car heat. Could have been. Whoa, oh, scatterbrain. <laughs> yeah, there we got our intrepid reporter out there, mired in the mud. Shane Amory. So we got Mark here. Um, Mark, congratulations on your win. Thanks. 
How do you like the track so far? <laughs> I won't answer that. I think everybody knows. Well, somebody finally <laughs> takes down uh, Casey. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, I would have had another one, but uh, it's a little muddy out. Big old holes. All right. Well, I guess that's it. All right, thank you, Shane. All right. Well, Mark Blossom, a new winner tonight. Finally. That's and a good blood. He had actually, he had looked good a couple of times and either got stuck in the mud or died, but uh, got her going and picked up the victory. We'll be back with our next one race coming up shortly. All right, our next mini car event coming up, and the first car out is the 707. I forgot my glasses, Doc. My eyes are getting shot in my old age. That would be Ricky Chris Duncan. Yeah, we got the 25 truck out there. Craig Owning. And the 32 of Mr. Mike Bluster. No. Nope. 32 should be Galbraith. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Galbraith. Galbraith. Number 21. Deidre Briley in the flower car. Yeah. 513. That's Dan Garrison. Garrison. I can't see the number on the weight car. It's too light. 63 is definitely Mike Lester. It's Lester. Number 92 is Matthew Schrodel. Number 96, Justin Hart. And the weight car cannot make out the number. Maybe we can pan over to the weight car. We'll have to Lester. take a look at her. Oh. There it is. That's a 401. All right. 401 is Keith Knowlton. Must be brother of Matt Knowlton out there tonight. There's your lineup, folks. Minis getting stuck before they can get going. Oh, man. That 498 up there finally made it through. But, uh, 92, though, still is going to need a little bit of a hand to get going. In my nine years of coming over here, this is easily the worst I've ever seen a track at any time of the year. When yeah. cars are getting stuck just trying to get onto it, that's pretty bad. Yeah, there's a big, huge lake right up there at the entry. The finales tonight are going to be very lackluster at best, but what do you do? Yeah, and they got that 92 moving out of the hole. Matthew Schrodel. And a flag man waves the flag and a quick shot by Gilbert. All right, let's see if they can avoid these nasty corners. Turn four. Gilbert with a nice hole shot at the 401. Staying tight on him. Staying out of the sippy hole. Gilbert taking a lead over Nolte. Owning already buried in the sippy hole. Yeah, the 25 is down, the 96 right below us is down. They know better than to come over here, yet they still go over there. It's like a fly <laughs> drawn to the light. And that 32, Gilbert still in the lead, but uh, the 401 is hanging in there, Keith Knowlton. Yes, brothers won a couple tonight, I believe. Yeah. I believe the 63 is in third place. Mike Lester, using a car from last year, gonna use it up. Yeah, it looks like Gilbert's getting close to lapping that 707. Oh man, nope, he's getting even closer to him. Oh yeah, he's zeroing in on him. That little hot Acura Integra chasing down the other mini. Oh man, he's oh. taking the short route. He cuts inside. He's got the lead. Ah, he's fighting for it, but he's got a car. He just moved him out of the way to 707, but now he's stuck in the mud. Nice little shot by John Gilbreth to get him out. 
So it's now the 401 out there in the oh, lead. Oh, Johnny Galbraith sneaking in on the inside, pulling a trick out of Nolte's bag. He's back. Taking the lead back. Lester hot on his tail. Oh, and there goes, I'm not sure, I believe Mike might, well, he probably is on the lead lap. Oh, yeah. Two laps to go, says Brandon Nixon. Well, they're showing the white flag now for, not sure if it was for Lester or Gelbrook. Yeah, it's one of the two. I don't, Lester might be up in there, I'm not sure. And Nolton's still hanging in there. Oh, there's the white lap. There's the checkered flag, and it is. Mike, is it Mike, Mike Lester. Lester once again? Steals one from the other two. Very nicely done, Mr. Lester. That's his second win of the night, I believe. Except I think third. John, I think John Gilbert thinks he might be the winner. That's Mike Lester's third win tonight if he gets it. And Brandon is pointing to the 63 car. Yep, he's got it. All right, that's win number three for Mr. Mike Lester tonight. Congratulations. I thought he was hung up, too, up there in that far end. This poor little 96 truck of Dustin Hart's got a four-cylinder, and it's only running on two of them. Time to take that home and get it fixed. They're not bringing it out again. That thing hasn't ran right the whole night. Bad Shane is out there. For the third time tonight, number 63, Mike Lester. Mike, you stole it. Yeah, I'm trying. And uh, this is for uh, Leonard. I need a new car. <laughs> Congratulations, Mike. Short and sweet. All right, any of right. you guys out there that got a car you want to give to Mike Lester? Way to go, Shane. <laughs> that might be the interview of the year. We might, that might make top 10 later in the year. That's right. The best of. All right. Well, hey, I need a car, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Shane. All right, folks, we're back. And it's going to be big cars. Second heat of the night for big cars. <laughs> if, we can get them, if we can get them on the field. Cody Wells out there. We got two of them. KC straight. Uh-oh. Should have bought a four-wheel drive. That international. Oh, yeah, rocking in a roll and shaking big. Can't get it done tonight. Got to keep moving. And we have a new configuration on the tires out there in the last couple of races. Man, this is just <laughs> horrible tonight. Like I said, when the cars can't even get onto the track to race, that's pretty bad. Not a good sign. There's that 19 of the rookie out there. Those metric cars are a lot lighter. That's why it's doing well tonight. And it probably doesn't have any gears in it, so that's another reason it's probably doing really well. Jim Harp in the seventh. And let's see who else we got coming out. Here we go. We only got five cars running, and we're underway. Mark Blossom starting out, but he gets a love tap there from number 10. And Casey Strait is going to mix it up. But the number 10 of Cody Wells out in the lead. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Mark Blossom is dead in the water, dead in the mud. Yeah, he hit the sippy hole and was done immediately. Cody Wells, though, going through that mud, keeping alive. KC straight in second. Big Jim Hart, the rookie, number and 19. Jim's going to cut the corner and get into that third position behind KC. Cody Wells in the 10, your leader. And Casey's making up a little ground. And Cody just powers through the, this west end there. Casey trying to close the gap, but... Every time he starts to get close, he gets a little hung up in the zippy hole. And Cody's got to go around Reeder. Rookie Reeder in the 19 car just got hung up. Casey shots him in the back. Oh, man, looks like somebody's car's 
teaming up, and that would be Reeder, and that broke free. Cody Wells in the number 10. They went the back of that fresh Chevy Caprice, the back of it, Casey just rearranged it for him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks like Casey's hung up on Reeder's car. They're both moving as Casey tries to back out of there. So Cody Wells, Jim Harp, Cody in the lead in the number 10 car. And they finally break free. KC is there, but he's a lap down. White flag out there for Cody Wells. Man, they're showing the white flag for KC. Pretty good race here. At least a few of them kept it moving. Whoa. And here comes Cody Wells. He's got the checkers. Yeah, KC is heading straight out while he can still move. Cody Wells out to the center, and Jim Harp, the other car that's still alive. Reeder is stuck on, steaming up on that far side, and Mark Blossom didn't get past the first lap. Yep, stuck in the sippy hole. You telling me? Yeah, Shane is out there. Now I believe they may have, maybe, are they gonna skip the eights? We'll see. That was though a big car heat race. All right, we have Cody Wells here. Cody, what was going through your mind during that race? Try to keep all four on the ground, keep shiny side up. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on your win tonight. Thank you. All right. And yeah, that was the first one tonight for Cody. He had a good run in a couple of races, but uh, this one he made it all the way through, got that first place for this big car heat race. Well, we're West Sound TV, happy to be bringing you Metal to Metal, the Kitsap Destruction Derby Association event number one, May 5th, 2012, the 40th season for the KDDA. We will be back with you for the next race shortly. Okay, this looks like this is gonna be the mini car finale. And our first competitor out there is the 140. That's Don Markwak lining her up over there. And this is what the fans have been waiting for, the smash and crash of D Derby finale. Yeah, we got some more of the minis coming in. Fifty-nine is there. Fifty-nine is Tony Timber. The three, two, one. The rookie, Sean Briley, 63. Mr. Mike Lester, 124. One, two, four is Mike Theobald. And there's one number I don't have yet. And that may be the one they're pushing out of that mud hole. Yeah, that's a three, two, one. Maybe up there at the end. Uh, let's see, I got the one, two, four. Got the 59. 63, 321, one, two, four. We'll have to see. I think it's probably the destroyer right there that I don't have. On my list yet. Anyway, we are there. It's the first demo derby finale of the season here at Thunderbird Stadium. 
It's the West Sound TV production team bringing you the metal to metal presentation of the Kitsap Destruction Derby's first event of the year, May 5th, 2012, Cinco de Mayo. I'm the Dr. Doc Parr, and uh, we've got Chris Mossman directing J.D. Van Kirk on the camera, Jack Bailey and Eric Reichel on cameras for you. And it looks like they got uh, six of them out there. Oh, here's a seventh one. If he can make it through that entryway, that would be the 92 uh, Matthew Schrodel. But uh, it looks like he may be stuck in the mud. Uh-oh, uh-oh, he got it going. Might not even need the boom zooms. Uh, the big yellow thing backs up. Let's see. Oh, nope, maybe not. President, this year's president of the KDDA, Mr. Steve Harris out there directing traffic. Yeah, here comes that big yellow machine, the zoom boom, one of the critical components tonight. We'll have to give a special award to the driver of that thing for this evening's hard work out there. And of course, it's pretty simple here in the finale. The last car moving is the winner. And he's got his place in line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars out there for you. Today. Which actually is pretty good if you stop and think about the way things have gone tonight. Everybody in the stands, Dennis Buckholtz, our PA announcer. They're gonna count them down. And let's get her done. Oh, the 195 there, that's a pretty looking car. That's the one I did not have on the list. And that would be Jeremy Petty. Nice action so far out there. Not too far from their eventual starting. Good hit that time by the 140. It's Don Markwick. Don staying in a little more solid. The 124 there, a petty. Or excuse me, the 124. He is Mike Theobald. Nice shot. The MO backs up into the 195. Petty. No, Mark Wick. He's an old pro. Oh, oh, he gets hit by Petty up against the wall. Oh, Petty with a nice shot there. He's working it. That shot was a 92 Schrodel. Oh, good shot by the 59, backing up. It's Tony Timlick, another veteran. Ooh oh, Mark Wick, and there goes the radiator. Oh, and Timlick busted his way through. And I think Mark Wick may be done. A bunch of steam coming out of his car. The 124 still alive. The 195, the 59, the 92 running around out there. And yeah, that 195 is looking pretty good. Jeremy Petty. Oh, driving the 124 into the wall. The 124 of Theobald. But uh, he's still alive. And he's gonna pay back. Oh, he misses it. Right now we got three cars out there running. It's the 195 of Jeremy Petty. 124 of Mike Theobald. And the 59 was going, but I don't think it's Move it now, and that would be Tony Timlick, last year's rollover champion. Oh, Tony's trying to get out of a big hole. But 
Two green cars right now are working on each other, and Tony's got only a couple of minutes, and it lo doesn't look like he's gonna get out of that hole unless he gets a hit. Oh yeah, he's still trying. Oh, a nice tap there by the 195 of Petty. And that may put Theobald out. Let's see. Yeah, they told Don Markwick and the 140 to pull his flag. The 63 is out. That's Mike Lester. Nice shot there by Petty on Theobald. And Petty's still running in that pretty green station wagon. I don't think the 59's gonna be able to get up and going. And it looks like the 124 hasn't pulled the flag in. Here comes the shot. Oh, nice shot by Mike Theobald. And the 124 is in a tough position right there. Big tire on one side and Mike Theobald on the other. That 124 is Jeremy Petty. Or actually, it's Theobald in the 124. And the other one is Petty. And they just told Theobald in the 124 to pull his flag. And that means a pretty station wagon out there of Jeremy Petty. The 195 is the winner tonight in the first mini car destruction derby of the 2012 season. And Shane Hamry's heading out there to talk to Jeremy Petty. Okay, Shane. Hey, congratulations on a Thanks. nice win. That track was a mess, but I did what I could do. Hey, it looks like your car is pretty fresh still, too. You gonna bring it back down? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Hey, Shane, that's a good, tell them that's a good looking green. Hey, they say that's a pretty good looking green. It went through a fire in my friend's garage <laughs> and sat outside for a while. Still holds up good. <laughs> hey, it's beautiful. Congratulations. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Shane, and congratulations to Jeremy Petty. A victory tonight in our first mini car event, Destruction Derby event of the 2012 season. All right, the event the crowd has been waiting for tonight, the big car finale. Destruction Derby at its best here at Thunderbird Stadium. It's Metal to Metal TV and West Sound TV production. And coming out in that pink car, our very own Mike Pinky Nordstrom from Puyallup, off the microphone and down into the stadium. We've also got the 330 out there. That would be Travis Kowalski. First time we've seen one of the cow drivers tonight. We've got the 07. 07 would be James Harp the third. And I can't see the number on the block car. We've got five of them out there so far. And we'll see if that's all we get. 137, that would be... Yeah, I'm looking at my list, it could be Skip Johnson. I do not see the 137 there. And the other one looks like it also has a 137 on it. Yeah, 
It's not, it's the car up in the front and not a great position. So here we go, we're ready to begin. We've got five cars out there for the big car destruction derby finale in this first event in 2012. Uh oh, there goes the Pink Meister. Oh, slammed into the wall. Down here on this other end, we've got three cars doing the do si -do. And we'll see Pinky's moving, but can he get off the wall? The car that hit him was the Skip Johnson car that we don't have the number on. Oh, a lot of action right down here in this west end in front of the fans. Kowalski in that cow car. The 07 of the Jim Harp the third. Oh, and it looks like the black star is alive. Three thirty. Uh, Kowalski. Oh, gets a good shot in the front end. We've got four cars going, and Pinky trying to get off the wall. But we've got four cars right down here below our position. Ah, oh, the Pink Man's alive, and he deals out a little trash there to the 137. Jim Harper in the 07. We've got Kowalski and Harp going up against each other on the far wall. Oh, nice hit that time. That opened up Kowalski and Harp, though, to batter horns like a couple of big rams out there. And that one car has a 137 number on it that's still alive, but we don't have that on our schedule. It's on the side of the car. And a one up there on the top. Kowalski and Jim Harp the third still moving. Right down here below us, the 330 of Kowalski and Jim Harp the third in the 07. A lot of steam coming out. And Pinky's taking his flag in on the pink machine. Harp and Kowalski, though, still going at each other. That's Travis. They're down here in this end, but a lot of deep breath. Ooh, Jim Harp the third with a nice shot on Travis Kowalski. It looks like those are the last two cars alive. Yeah, we'll see who, I think the last hit so far is to Jim Harp. He backs off. Kowalski's moving. Oh, Harp gets him in the rear corner. Travis has got to get turned around. Oh, he gets a hit on Pinky, but Pinky's flag's down, so that doesn't count as far as timing goes. Yeah, it looks like Jim Harp's going to keep on. Oh, nice hit there between the 07 and the 30, but it's Jim Harp who's dealing out the punishment. Oh, another nice hit by Harp. They must have, like, the strongest radiators. It's steaming good, though, but it's still driving. Whoa, another one into Kowalski. 
And until the flag comes down, it's legal hit. And so now Harp is going to turn around and take him from the rear. And he's the last car moving. Oh, he doesn't. Gets a shot on the right front there. And it sounds like it's down to one moving car. And that's the 07. Uh, Jim Harp the third. Oh, and Travis Kowalski gets a great hit by Harp on that front fender. A great hit for Jim. Probably not so fun for Travis. We're into Travis's car, all smashed up. Uh oh, here we go. This could be the killer. Rear end from. Jim Harp. And that 07. And Dennis Buckholz of the PA tells Travis Kowalski to pull his flag in the 330. And that leaves the winner. 07, Jim Harp the third. And it looks like that other car that we didn't have the name on was the original Jim Harp. Got out of his car to shake hands with his buddies and Jim Harp the third take it off. Not even going to get his uh, trophy apparently. And so that looks like it's going to wrap up the evening tonight for the first event here in the Kitsap Destruction Derby Association's 40th season, the 2012 D Derby season underway here at Thunderbird Stadium. Well, happy to have had you with us on the internet or on television of BKAT. We got to thank our great crew. We've got Patricia and JD Van Kirk on camera, Jack Bailey and Eric Reichel also on camera. Mr. Chris Mossman is directing the show tonight. Got to give Shane Hamry a whole lot of thanks and credit for stepping in uh, to do the tough job out there on the field. And my partner, Pinky, Mike Pinky Nordstrom is not here. He's down on the field and he did predict that it was going to be a short where he said he was about the shortest of them all, I think, out there. Well, anyway, it's been a fun evening for you. The next KDDA event will be on May 19th out here at Thunderbird Stadium. So come on down and have some great fun down here with the Kidsap Destruction Derby Association. I'm Dr. Doc Parr saying stay tuned. We will see you soon.